one of the biggest and most welcome surprises of the year is this scooter, the RS from Inmotion, a brand most well known for their electric unicycles. They also make a line of commuting focused electric scooters, but the RS is just a whole different category of scooter. Just, just look at it. It's a bold jump going from $1,000 commuting focus scooters to a $4,600 60 mile an hour monster like this. But not only have they done it spectacularly, but they've done it while introducing new design elements and new features that make it one of the most unique scooters on the market. It has such an aggressive sporty look that practically begs you to go fast. And fast it goes! I'll dive into our performance numbers in a minute, but in order to go fast, you need to have a properly built scooter. The cockpit is fresh and modern with a large, crisp color display. The model we received is a pre-production model and InMotion told me that the display will be slightly different on the production models. It's actually supposed to be an upgrade over the already great display screen. The cockpit also has a full set of display controls, turn signals, a cruise control button, a very loud horn, and a headlight switch. The grips are smooth and will get a bit slick from hand oils and sweat if you ride gloveless like I often do. Gloves are pretty much a must on longer rides if you keep the stock grips. This has a twist throttle like the Segway GT2 and the sound wave controllers mean that acceleration is smooth without sacrificing power and speed. I've always been partial to trigger throttles and more recently this style of thumb throttle, but the twist throttle on the RS has grown on me as I've ridden it. There's also just an unmatchable hardcore feeling of cranking a twist throttle and feeling the scooter take off. There are four riding modes with X being the highest mode. There's also a park mode similar to the Segway models that turns on when the scooter is stopped for a period of time. How long it needs to be stopped for before park mode engages can be adjusted in the app so you can set it so it doesn't constantly switch into park mode at every stop sign or traffic light. Using the cruise control button while the scooter is stopped, you can switch between dual motor mode and single motor mode with either the front or back motor as the motor receiving power. Having a front motor only mode is kind of funny since I can't really think of a scenario where you'd only want the front motor running, but it does make for some cool burnout shots. If you ride in single motor mode to save some battery or make the acceleration more manageable, just use the rear motor since that's where your weight will naturally shift when accelerating. Because they adjust, I can set the handlebars to the exact height I like. About 42 inches or line number three is perfect for me, a six foot tall rider. This also allows me to line up the throttle for a comfortable range of motion. The handlebars curve back towards me a bit, so I don't have to lean forward at all to reach them, but they don't encroach into the standing space like swept handlebars sometimes do on other scooters. The hydraulic spring suspension feels pretty decent, and while I still have yet to ride anything that can compete with the NAMI Burn E models in terms of suspension travel and overall suspension feel, the adjustable preload and rebound on the RS is great to see. However, even with my heavier 215 pound weight, plus the weight of the scooter, the slowest rebound setting is not quite where I want it, springing back a bit quicker than I'd like. Having a touch more suspension travel would also help with the larger bumps. Overall though, the suspension, plus the larger 11 inch by four inch wheels, is sufficient for almost all situations you might be riding in. Probably the most surprising aspect of this scooter is that despite its size and its weight, it still handles really well and feels really nimble and agile. Usually with these monster scooters, things like cornering and carving aren't as good as the, as the smaller scooters. The fact that the handlebars are wide and it's low to the ground and that the steering is loose and smooth, all that contributes to really good handling and really satisfying carving feel. The built-in adjustable damper is awesome, allowing for a quick switch from loose responsive steering, perfect for a commute or casual cruise, to stiffer, more stable steering to help prevent speed wobble at higher speeds. This flexibility does come at a cost though, the sound. At the stiffer settings, the damper squeaks incessantly and makes moving the scooter around or steering at lower speeds an extremely grating experience. Once you're at speed though, it mostly goes away or maybe it's just drowned out by the sound of the wind. Luckily, loosening the damper gets rid of the noise so you don't have to hear this every time you move the RS around. With an IPX6 water resistance rating, all weather riding is possible, including heavy rain. This also means that you can just clean the scooter by hosing it down as long as you don't use a pressure washer or any form of high pressure water on it. 
Be sure to dry your scooter off properly after riding in the rain or washing it off though. Now let's get to the fun stuff, our performance numbers. As I've hinted in the title, thumbnail, and throughout this video, this is one of the most high performance scooters we've ever tested, claiming the crown of both the highest top speed and quickest zero to 30. This 72 volt scooter packs quite a punch with dual 2000 watt motors, offering 8,400 watts of peak power with dual 50 amp controllers. In our two way speed test that takes into account things like wind and elevation change, we clocked a mind numbing 62.1 miles an hour sustained top speed with single direction speeds as high as 65 miles an hour. Another first for me is that the displayed speed accurately reflected the actual speeds that we got using our equipment, rather than displaying higher than actual speeds like basically all scooters do. So when you're flying along and the display says 60 miles an hour, you can know that you're actually going 60 miles an hour. The RS rips up to 30 miles an hour in a neck snapping 3.5 seconds, making it the fastest scooter to 30 miles an hour that we've ever tested. What's even crazier is that this scooter has a legit zero to 60 time like a car. There are a few things that match the feeling of pulling up next to a car at a red light, and absolutely smoking it off the line, and then being able to also pull away from it with the insane top speed. And just in case you weren't convinced by these numbers or in motion's fantastic slogan, climb hills with ease, yes, the RS does in fact climb hills with ease. Actually, it does it with too much ease, flying to the top of our 10% 200 foot hill climb test in 6.5 seconds, making it one of the fastest hill climbers we've ever tested. This is on par with the NAMI Bernie 2 Max, which Paul used to climb the steepest hill in San Francisco. So there really shouldn't be a hill on earth that this thing can't climb. The range is also extremely impressive, giving me 44 4.7 miles on a single charge riding in the highest speed mode. This is about the same distance as my round trip commute to the office. And with how bad Bay Area traffic is and how fast the RS goes, I could probably get to work and back faster on this scooter than I do in my car. Unfortunately, taking a scooter on the highway isn't the safest or most legal thing to do, even though it is fast enough to keep up with traffic just fine. The RS has the full range of top tier performance numbers with impressive braking distances as well. It's equipped with Zoom hydraulic disc brakes, which aren't typically the best performing brakes when compared to Nut and Logan brand brakes. However, the super thick 160 millimeter rotors and long low to the ground build of the RS helps it stop in just over 10 feet from 15 miles an hour. The stopping time is really good, but the brake levers do have an overly mushy feel to them out of the box with a bit of dead space before the brakes properly engage. The levers also have an excess of vertical play, which further contributes to that loose, mushy initial brake feel. If all you care about is stopping quickly, then these brakes get the job done, but an upgrade to Logan or Magura brakes is something to seriously consider for those pickier about their braking feel. One of the most unique features of the RS is the adjustable ride height. You can raise the height by moving the bottom of the suspension and slotting it into one of the three other holes in the swing arm. This theoretically has some great potential for giving you more ground clearance for off-roading. However, the street tires it ships with aren't ideal for that kind of riding, and the scooter feels best and has plenty of clearance at the lowest setting if you plan on just street riding. It is a cool option to have though, especially if you swap out the tires. This is a heavy scooter weighing in at over 130 pounds, which really isn't unexpected for a scooter with this build and performance, but it's definitely relevant if you're ever going to have to carry it up or down stairs. It's long and tall as well, but I did manage to squeeze it into my sedan along the back seat, so it is doable. However, you should probably have an SUV if you need to haul this around regularly. There's no lock to keep the handlebars down, so it can be a bit awkward to carry or load up when folded. The display also hits against the deck when folded down, so you need to rotate it out of the way and rotate it back every time you fold and unfold the scooter. The RS has a decent array of lights with a large tail mounted brake light that flashes when braking, four low mounted turn signals in back and front, two high mounted turn signals on the handlebars that face forward, and a really decent headlight mounted about halfway up the stem. All the low mounted lights stay on when the headlight is on for good nighttime visibility. The turn signals on the handlebars are a great addition and something that a lot of scooters are lacking, but they do get in the way of the brake levers a bit if you adjust the levers down at more of an angle like I like to do. You might need to move the turn signal lights around to properly set up your cockpit. As every scooter seems to have now, the RS has an app that lets you customize a number of settings, including motor and braking power and track mileage and riding 
driving time. I had a few issues with the app with it struggling to connect to the scooter and disconnecting while I was riding. I would prefer to just have access to the P settings from the scooter itself instead of fiddling with an app. I've honestly never had a problem free experience with the scooter app. Besides the app, there were a few other issues and small things I ran into while testing. First, the main rear fender cracked and snapped off after less than 10 miles of use. A couple larger bumps were just too much for it and it snapped on one end and cracked on the other. I've been told by InMotion that the fenders have been improved for the production models and are more resistant to braking. Let's hope this is the case because the rear fender is designed to hold the motor line out of the way so the line doesn't rub on the wheel. The clamps on the display also have a flimsy cheap feel to them and even when fully tightened, they don't properly lock the display in place. When I was trying to tighten down one of the screws, it broke through the thin plastic of the clamp. Again, InMotion assured me that the production model has improved display clamps. And finally, the kickstand is the other problem I had with the RS. I thought that it wasn't quite beefy and stable enough for this scooter. It also isn't usable, as is, when the ride height is set to a taller setting. Once again, InMotion told me that the production model addresses the issue with a better adjustable length kickstand. Overall, even with the issues I had, the core things like performance and the most important aspects of build quality are executed well, and all the issues I had are things that are supposed to be fixed on the production model. Model. Let's look at what the RS has for competition at the price and see how it stacks up. First, the NAMI Burn E2 Max is as close of a peer to the RS as you can get in terms of price and performance, blistering acceleration, and impressive top speed. The RS holds a very slight edge in most performance categories, but the Burn E2 Max is the more comfortable scooter with heavenly suspension and a huge riding platform. The RS wins in the handling department with an adjustable damper, low to the ground riding height, and tight responsive steel. The Segway GT2 seems like a perfect comparison for the RS, with lots of similar design aspects. An almost identical length, width, and weight, a big flat riding platform and deck tail, a bright advanced display, hydraulic spring suspension, and a twist throttle. They also have comparable retail prices. However, the performance gap from the GT2 to the RS is quite large. The thing that the GT2 does do better is execution of the small things like the fenders, the kickstand, and the integrated display and controls. It definitely has a more polished feel. But for ripping around at deadly speeds, the RS is the clear choice. The Cavill Wolf King GT Pro is a serious contender in all of the performance categories and is $1,000 less than the RS, but seems to focus more on all-terrain riding with a high riding height and a chunky dual stem build. The RS is much more of a street scooter and holds the edge in raw performance. The upcoming Wolf King GTR promises a significant upgrade to the GT Pro at a similar price to the RS. We're going to be reviewing the GTR, so get sub to see that review when it comes out. In short, there's honestly next to no scooters on the market that could deliver the performance and adrenaline pumping thrills that the RS delivers at the price. It's an addicting scooter to ride and easily one of the most fun, most insane scooters I've ever tested. Be sure to check it out at the link in the description where we'll have any discount codes or sale information for you. Also, if you like this video, check out our review of the Dualtron X Limited, the second fastest scooter we've ever reviewed. That'll pop up on the screen at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Mitchell with Rider Guide, and we'll see you in the next one.